Mr. Speaker, I rise today to celebrate and remember the life of former Representative Ellen Bard, my predecessor and a friend to so many in this chamber and across Pennsylvania, especially in our hometown of Abington. Joining us today from Abington are some of her former staff members and friends, Township Commissioner Peggy Myers, Joanne Ayer, Edie Distel, and Chris Gertz. Mr. Speaker, at Ellen's memorial service this weekend at Abington Presbyterian Church, which some of the members here attended, so many reflected on Ellen's life as a wife, a mother, a representative, a businesswoman, and as a township commissioner. The story shed light for me on a life well lived, with meaning and accomplishment, but a life cut too short on October 28th, six months after being diagnosed with pancreatic cancer at the age of just 60. But Ellen lived her life up to the final moments. During her service, Ellen's husband Rob read an Egyptian proverb that he told us was selected by Ellen just prior to her passing. Weeks before her death while living in San Francisco with their daughter Allison and undergoing medical treatments, Ellen and Rob visited the King Tut exhibit where Ellen was, according to Rob, taken by an Egyptian proverb, which read, to speak of the dead is to bring them back to life. So let us speak of Ellen a bit this afternoon. Ellen was born in Minneapolis on January 11th, 1949. She grew up in Alaska and traveled extensively as a young woman and into adulthood. She graduated from Pomona College and earned master's degrees from both Boston University and MIT. Before coming to Abington, she worked in Allentown in the field of alternative energy and also founded a computer supply firm. Ellen Bard was an accomplished woman. She was a committed environmentalist who strove to better our community. And after being involved in various civic groups, including founding Earthright, which helped establish Abington's curbside recycling program, Ellen won a township commissioner's seat in 1991. In 1995, she was elected here to the Pennsylvania House, where she served for 10 years with distinction as a member of the Local Government Committee, Transportation, Tourism and Recreational Development, Environmental Resources and Energy Committee, and there chaired the Subcommittee on Energy. During her tenure in the House, as many of you know, Ellen was determined in her promotion of alternative energy and sought to make Pennsylvania a leader in this arena as the chair of the Task Force on a 21st century energy policy for Pennsylvania. She was talking about many of these issues well before they became part of the mainstream political discourse. Ellen sponsored 18 bills that were passed into law, a tremendous accomplishment, I think, as each of us can attest. She was especially proud of passing a bill that established the DARE license plate based on the drawings and designs of Abington students. Ellen would have appreciated that this resolution would be considered today in the House on D-Day, as mentioned by the former speaker. Given the tremendous work she did with veterans in our community, working with them to record and catalog their life stories to ensure that they are never forgotten. Ellen was a tenacious advocate at the state and local level. Her accomplishments and efforts are too numerous to list. She was so committed to energy independence and even offered an 11 bill package called the Energy Freedom Bills. But even as she was working on big picture legislation, she always focused on local issues. As mentioned, Ellen was an avid and committed environmentalist. But as our friend Peggy Myers told me the other day, Ellen didn't just talk about it, she lived it. She was, as Peggy referred to her, a back to nature girl. That was evidenced by being the second person our, in our community to drive a hybrid Prius, the use of her wood burning stove. Their 750 square foot cabin in New Hampshire with no running water that she built with Rob, literally built with Rob together. Ellen adored the peace and tranquility of nature. And perhaps it was that ability to recenter herself and find that tranquility in life that helped her find such a wonderful balance between her public and her private life, always finding a way, her former staff tells me, to attend event after event, but still have dinner with her family. Maybe, Mr. Speaker, it was that sense of balance that also gave Ellen the ability to be committed to her political party, but not constrained by the ideology or conventional wisdom of a partisan ideology. 
She managed to assess situations and facts not through the rigid prism of politics, but rather through what was best for her constituents and the Commonwealth. Mr. Speaker, Ellen loved this chamber very much. And on November 9, 2004, she said on the House floor in her farewell address, she said, Mr. Speaker, to carry the public trust is a great honor. She said, this is truly an awe-inspiring institution, and I feel very privileged to have had the opportunity to be one of the 112 women who has served in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. I have been in excellent company, she said here on the House floor. So, Mr. Speaker, thank you for affording me this opportunity to speak of Ellen Bard. And as that Egyptian proverb reads, to speak of the dead is to bring them back to life. Ellen's life and legacy will endure in so many ways and in so many places, in our community in Abington, here in this chamber, and throughout the Commonwealth. So may God bless the memory of Ellen Bard and all who have come to know her. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.